When the previous generation Maserati Gran Turismo came out in 2007, I was never really a fan of that design. The taillight looked too big, the stance was a little messed up because the rear wheels set so far inside of the bodywork, which you can't have on an Italian GT car like this. We actually have the previous generation right over there in the black. I'm gonna film that a little bit so you can have a comparison to this new one. So in this video, we're gonna have a look at this, the 2024 Maserati Gran Turismo. This is the Modena trim. You have two different trim levels. You have the Modena, then you have the top of the lines Trofeo. And this one is for sale right here at Maserati in Denver. I'm gonna link that down in the description if you wanna go and check this out. So what we're gonna do in this video is have a look at this beautiful design because this design is essentially all the changes that I wanted to see in the old one happened in this version. It's a stunning design and the pricing is pretty stunning as well because this one, the Modena, it's not even the Trofeo, this is about $200,000. So we're gonna have a look at this. What is going on with this design in the front end, the side view, the rear, the interior, and then we're gonna take this for a drive. Let's have a look at some of the basic spec and tech of the 2024 Maserati Gran Turismo Modena. You have a three liter twin turbo V6, putting out 485 horsepower, 403 pound-feet of torque, connected to an eight-speed automatic transmission. This one is all wheel drive. Zero to 60 is done in 3.7 seconds with a top speed of 180. 88 miles per hour. Fuel economy sits at 15 city, 25 highway, and the pricing for this is $200,000. All right, starting with the gorgeous front end of this design. It's absolutely stunning. However, there are a couple of things that I personally would like to change. Not, I'm not gonna make a redesign because Maserati has actually already did that for me in the Trofeo trim. We're gonna talk more about that in just a second. Looking at these headlights right here, this looks very similar to the ones that we have in the MC20. You still have the same separated two LEDs, one in the bottom and one up top right here. What I would like to do here though, is to add some more dynamic feeling to these LEDs. They look way too static. The rest of the body is all about emotion, nice line flow, and this Italian exotic feel. And then you have this very static looking headlight with the LEDs. That's one detail that I wanna change. Meaning dynamic, meaning that I wanna have a different thickness in the LED. So it has some movement in it and some flow to it. Now looking at the center portion of the new Maserati, 2024 Maserati Gran Turismo. I can't believe it's right here in front of me. We just unveiled not that long ago. You have this typical uh, almost ellipse-like Maserati grille with the concave ribs inside of it in gloss black looking really good. I love the treatment of this grille and I also like that we still have this little dip right here, this horn connecting to the top horn of the Trident logo in the center, looking fantastic. You also have the front mounted camera installed right here. However, when we look at the lower section, this is where it gets interesting. And this is where you can see a clear difference between the uh, Modena trim that we have right here and the Trofeo. I 100% prefer the Trofeo for one simple reason. Now, if you look at the lower section here, this is the reason why I prefer the Trofeo, because in this case, the Modena, it has this rounded, uh, nice organic shape to it, but it doesn't have any body color to hold all the graphics up. This is a similar treatment that the redesign I made with the MC20, where it feels like the front end is sort of hanging over this black piece. I need to have a foundation down here to have a nice base and foundation for the front end graphics to sit on. And I also wanna have this be a little bit different shape, maybe sharper. And these changes are exactly what's going on in the Trofeo. And that's the reason why I prefer the Trofeo styling over the Modena. But have a look at the hood here. Let's just appreciate this beautiful front fender that has a nice sharp line going right into it. This is one of the sharp lines that I would uh, experiment with to see if it would work on the Maserati Grecale, but they did have it here in the new Gran Turismo. Absolutely beautiful with these big muscles on top of the hood. This hood itself, if you open this up, I could hang this up on the wall and it would be a piece of art. So coming around to the side view, and you might think, why did they price this at two, right under $200,000 with this layout? It's not even the V8 up front. Unfortunately, they don't make the Gran Turismo with the V8 anymore, which is a bummer. And then you have the price of $200,000. But for me, what makes this a $200,000 car is the design and the proportions of this. If you think about it, the Ferrari GTs with the front engine uh, cars that they have with the GT layout, 
the Lamborghinis as well, they don't really have a front engine GT car. But this is essentially the last of the pure Italian emotional designs in a GT package. This design, this side view is going to be just as beautiful today as it will be a hundred years from now. I really do believe that this will be a, a future classic and collectible when it comes to the overall design of this car. Now, looking at the wheel and tire setup here, we do have a staggered setup, meaning that we do have 20s in the front end. We do have 21s in the rear, 295s wide tires in the rear. I think I want to have them be just a little bit wider than this to not have the same problems that we have with the previous generation Gran Turismo, where the wheel sits way inside the body. And in the front end, we have 265 millimeter wide tires. You can get this with larger tires than this, but I actually think that these, uh, design, this design here, it has more of an elegant feel to it. I would probably switch these wheels out because I think when you have a Gran Turismo like this, even though this, these wheels are very elegant looking, I still think they could look better suited for these type of proportions and also sit a little lower than what it does right here. So looking at the Gran Turismo from a straight side view and what I love about this design is that it feels like, as I said in the beginning, this is almost the perfect evolution of the previous generation. This just looks so much better. They simplified the design. While, as I said, Ferrari, for example, it feels like they're adding more stuff onto their designs and it's not, it's today Ferrari GT's front engine, they're not as elegant as they once were, but here it is. In this area here, we do have the same three graphics that we have here that we had in the Gricola, for example, but in this case, they are actually functional. So as I said in the Gricola review, I wanted this to be a hollow, and that's exactly what it did. They have the same pattern, the honeycomb pattern in there, but it is a hollow entrance to the hood. So you have some air vents, hot air flowing out from the, underneath the hood. Then you have this gorgeous Modena text up, up top, which looks fantastic. Further down, you do have this cut line in the lower section of the body. The only sharp line in this area of the body is this piece here. I think it works so well to have the sharp lines, one right here going over the hood, creating this typical long, beautiful Italian GT hood. Nothing in the shoulder line in the, in the, in the middle of the car, but it comes down, down here at the bottom. And then at the rear end, you need to have this massive bulge over the rear wheels. Even though this is an all wheel drive, it gives it that rear wheel drive proportions that you want in a GT car like this. Coming around to the rear end of the new Maserati Gran Turismo, you can clearly see the resemblance here, for example, to the Quattroporte design that we have with these long sleek taillights that does have some dynamic to it in the LEDs, again, something that I would like to apply to the front end headlights as well and the LEDs up here, up there. But have a look at how beautifully sculpted this area and then how it goes into the deck lid and the trunk with this nice, beautiful send off. This has a bit of a curvature just going slightly upwards right before it cuts off with this sharp line here. Looking closely at the graphics back here, and this is something that is congruent all around the new uh, Quattroporte, is the simplicity in the lines and in the styling, in the graphics, in the proportions. Everything has a very classic approach to it. That goes for the rear end as well. You do have this LED lights as we talked about with some other lighting in the bottom and you have the reverse light sitting right here in the middle. Moving further down, you have a simplistic bumper. There's nothing crazy going on about this bumper. It's just there to separate the top graphics from the lower graphics, just like we've had in cars for 50, 60 years, coming back here in a modern version. Further down, we do have a pretty sleek looking diffuser. It's not aggressive at all. It doesn't even have any fins on it. That's probably something that's going to change when they come out with a more aggressive versions of the uh, Gran Turismo in the future. And you have the chrome tailpipes, quad tailpipes set up right here with the exhaust sitting on each side, symmetrical. Everything in this car is symmetrical. And you also have this little dip here in the middle, which I love with the Maserati logo up top. Now, last but not least, looking at this Maserati Gran Turismo from a straight rear view that you're doing right now, I think it has this planted look to it. And that has to do with these big, beautiful fenders that we talked about and the horizontal graphics that we have laid out in the rear end. In addition to the bumper lines, that also is just a straight line going from one end all the way to the other. So overall, the exterior design of this thing looks fantastic and it brings back the quality, the originality and the classic lines that we're used to seeing from Maserati.
Welcome to the beautiful interior of the Maserati Gran Turismo and honestly I'm surprised that there is a lot in here that looks very similar to the $70,000 Maserati Grecali. You have the same infotainment screen, same gauge cluster, same type of digital uh, clock that you have up here. Before I fire it up I just want to show you the key. It looks like this. Nothing really special about the key. We have the logo in the, in the back. It has some nice weight to it. So let's fire this up because it's getting really hot in here. And the Natuno V6, it sounds really great but I mean I would definitely prefer it to be the V8 because I think Maserati is one of these brands that uh, has a very iconic sound to it and the V8 is sort of connected to the spirit of the brand so I would want to have a V8 in this. Well, let's have a look at what's going on in here. We have, we'll start up top, move our way down to the bottom to the armrest seats, your steering wheel gauge cluster. So moving up here we have the same beautiful clock that we have in the Grecale for example. You can change this out, this is actually digital. You can have it be a clock, you have three different uh, versions of a clock. You have the classic version which is the one I would pick because it looks fantastic. You also have the Maserati logo and the font as a background for this clock. If you want to switch that out, if you want to go a little sporty you can do that. You have a sport watch and you also have the design which is almost like a digital minimalistic clock. I would definitely always keep it in uh, classic. If you want to you can switch this up. You can have a compass in there, you can have the pedals, see how hard you're pressing on the brake or how hard you're pressing on the gas. You have a graph for, for that. I don't know what it's supposed to be useful for but again it's just a cool feature or you can have a G meter. So this is when you take this to the track, take it up the mountain roads and you really want to test the cornering and handling of this thing. Moving further down we do have some very traditional looking vents here. So these are super easy to figure out because you have this big uh, flap here that you can just adjust and you can see the vents going on behind it exactly what's going on and where the air is going to blow out from. Then you have this 12.3 inch infotainment screen. You do have the home button and you have the media, the navigation which is very useful. This is a Stellantis Uconnect 5 system so it is available in, in a lot of other cars and I know some people might complain about that because they want uh, Maserati specifically for 200 grand and I, I can I can sort of see why they don't want to have a, the same system that they're finding Jeeps in their 200 grand Maserati but that gives Maserati more money and more resources to spend on everything else that goes on in the car. For example this gorgeous design. I really like this system. I liked it in the Grecale. I like it just as much here. Another detail that we have here is that we do have the logo, the front end as a silhouette outlined here and I really like how they did that. Attention to detail like that makes it feel like it's just you know a Uconnect system off the shelf of Stellantis put in the Maserati. They actually did a couple of things to the user interface here to make it feel more special. I really appreciate that. Further down you do have the controls for the gear selector. So these are just regular old buttons. Put it in reverse you're gonna pop up the reverse camera. You have a 360 camera, you have the fisheye front and rear as well. Very easy to use and it's definitely going to help you when you're parking this thing specifically with a fisheye wide uh, lens that you have on both the front camera and the rear. Further down you have an 8.8 .8 inch display and this is static. This is always going to be here. Whatever you do up top is not going to change the fact that the climate control settings are always going to be visible in the lower section and I really like that feature. If you're going to have two digital screens like this for everything, all the settings in the car, at least keep one part of it static and fixed in place and that should always be for the climate control settings. So it's very easy to, uh, to figure this out. You have all the nice icon here for the uh, heated and cooled seats for example in three different steps. You have the heated steering wheel here in one step. Then you have, you can click on these uh, figures here and you can see exactly where the air is coming out from. If you want it to blow out from the lower section or the middle section, super easy to use and in addition to you know adju manually adjusting the vents as well. You also have the fan speed right here. So this is a good system if you want to have it be all digital because you don't really have to figure a lot out when you're out driving on the highway. You just need to quickly glance down exactly see what you're hitting. You don't need to go into a separate uh, section in the infotainment screen to just figure out the climate control settings and that's exactly what you want right here. You also have a lowering section for the car so you can lower the car 
or raise the car up by this button right here. You have the, uh, the automatic shut off for the engine on and off. Let's turn that off as usual. You have the parking sensors and you have the stability control off. You also have a button to the very far right end point of this lower section, which is going to open up the glove box. So you can't open it manually. There's no handle here. You just click this button and boom, you see? Not sure if that's easier or harder than to just have a simple handle there. Let's talk about the integration of this thing. So we do have two screens, 12, 8.3, 8.8 at the bottom, separated by the gear selector buttons in the middle. It also has this curvature to it, a, a fold right in the middle, so it kind of follows nicely the uh, the flow of the center console. It looks a little maybe out of place because everything else up here is pretty organic and then you have this pretty static looking centerpiece. But overall in functionality, it works really well. And this is one of my favorite uh, all digital infotainment systems compared to, for example, BMW's iDrive 8, which I'm not a huge fan of, specifically when it comes to just changing the climate settings. This is a lot easier than that. Further down, you do have the wireless charging port right here. Just slide your phone in here, it's rubberized, angled, the phone is not gonna go anywhere. Then this trim, instead of having gloss black or piano black like we have in a lot of other Maseratis, this is now carbon fiber. And it has to be carbon fiber. This car costs $200,000. You need to have it be a little bit more different than the $70,000 Gricala. And I think just having some carbon fiber here, even though it's a small change for an additional $130,000, it still makes it feel a little bit more special than those other interiors. You have two small cup holders right here. And for the back, you do have some storage underneath the armrest. It's not deep uh, at all. You have two USBs, one regular and one USB-C. And you also have a 12-volt cigarette outlet with this nice leather-wrapped armrest right here with the same color stitching that we have on the seat. So talking about these seats here, these look like GT seats. They look like they suit this car perfectly because they're not too aggressive. They're not too sporty, but you still have some pretty decent bolstering on the sides. And again, you do have this embroidered uh, Maserati Trident logo in the headrest looking fantastic with some metal pieces right here in the middle. Looking decent. Personally, I would probably not go for this color of interior. This not sure it's like elephant gray or something like that i would much rather it be red with the white interior i think a red interior with white would look spot on moving on to this steering wheel here so this is again maybe something that uh, some people are going to have a problem with the the price point of the i'm going to come back to this two hundred thousand dollar price point for the gran turismo and there is so much stuff in here that are just the same exactly the same stuff as you get in the seventy thousand dollar gricola for example the steering wheel is exactly the same one that you get in the gricola there is nothing wrong with this steering wheel that's not at all what i'm saying but what i'm saying is i wish they would have made it feel more special than this Specifically, you have the gloss black here. While well, you have carbon fiber down here, why not put the carbon fiber in the housing for the buttons up here? Just some small touches like that to make it feel special. Again, it's a great looking steering wheel. It's pretty small, pretty uh, thin, and it's thick where you want it to be thick up here, for example, and it has a flat bottom steering wheel. On the right side, you have all the controls for the cruise control settings. And on the left spoke, you have the controls for customizing this gauge cluster, which you can have in several different uh, layouts. You have the head-up display up front with the map in there as well, looking fantastic. You can have the cluster layout be either classic, you can have it be in evolved, or you can have it be in relaxed. And all of these are going to change the uh, graphics for what this interior uh, cluster looks like. I personally like to have it in, let's see, I think it was classic with just a tachometer to the left. Then you have the speedometer to the right looking great. That's all I need. And this housing looks really great as well. The gauge cluster sits deep within the housing. It has a cap for it, no glare. You have a little bit more glare in this section because it's angled upwards. It's a fantastic looking interior, but is it a $200,000? looking interior, I'm not so sure. Looking at these pedals, they're mounted to the uh, column itself, so they're not mounted to the steering wheel, and they are absolutely massive. These are surfboards right here. You can take this off and just go surfing if you wanted to. That's how big they are, but they need to be this big since they're static and fixed to the column. You always wanna have, no matter how much you're turning, you always wanna have a quick, uh, quick reach to the pedals and that's what you get when you have them this big. Further down on the steering wheel, you do have the start stop button right here to the left and you have the drive mode select to the right. So you have comfort, GT and sport and I'm sure you know which one I'm gonna pick. You also have a button in the center of this dial that selects the suspension. So you can have it in sport or normal. I'm gonna have it in sport 
obviously. Up top, you do have a digital rear view mirror, which I am thankful for. If you don't want that, you can just switch it off and you have a normal mirror like every other car. You can also adjust this camera up and down, zoom in and out. I like to have it in the most zoomed out setting as possible because it's gonna give me the widest view of what's going on behind me. Looking at these doors, very elegantly styled doors. I like the integration here a lot better, specifically of the speaker than we have in the Grucale, for example. It looks nice, you have some float in the stitching, creating some dynamic flow in it. You have the top part being the black leather and then it comes back to this elephant gray or beige uh, style at the rest of the door with some carbon fiber inlets right here. Again, a little bit of carbon fiber here and there to make it feel more special than other Maserati, but I'm not sure if it's worth $130,000 to just have some carbon fibers in there. But we're gonna wait and see until we drive this. Maybe the driving is gonna blow me away. I'm not sure, we're gonna see about that. We also have a back seat, this being a two plus two, it's very tight back there. I am not gonna jump in there. We're gonna show you what, what it looks like because I would definitely not fit there being 6'1". Then you have some more carbon fiber here for the housing for the passenger cup holders. And you have two USB ports back there, one regular and one USB-C. It is about that time. We're setting off in the brand spanking new. Maserati 2024 model year Gran Turismo. So this is going to be interesting because I'm, I'm coming back to that $200,000 price point and uh, we do have the Natuno V6, which is the same V6 that you get in the MC20. It's just been detuned here a little bit. It's twin turbo. You got 485 horsepower, zero to 60 in about 3.7 seconds. Uh, so it is a, a pretty quick GT, but 3.7 seconds doesn't really sound too fast in today's world. But we're going to have a look at how what that feels like when you're really stepping on it. So of course I have everything in uh, the sportiest setting. Let's just adjust the steering wheel upwards a little bit. Power adjustable, thankfully, for $200,000. <laughs> I would hope it would be. So let's put it in, uh, of course, in manual. And let's see what this 8-speed can do when we're really stepping on it here. So we have all-wheel drive and 0 to 60 in 3.7 seconds. So here we go. Ooh, wow. Wow. Sounds almost like a... Sounds almost like a V8. And before I set off in this, I was a little bit skeptic about having the V6 in here. Oh, this thing really feels like a roller coaster when you're stepping on it. I felt it in my stomach there. It really pulls super strong and it feels like it maybe even faster than 3.7 seconds. I'm not entirely sure, but it definitely feels very fast. Not MC20 fast. That's not what this is. This is a GT. Keep in mind that you have a beautiful sculpture out here uh, on the exterior and it is big. I thought the last Gran Turismo was a big car. This is even bigger than that. I'm not sure how big the doors are on this thing, but they really swing out far when you're trying to get out of this. Now, while we're at the red light here, I wanna hear your opinion. Do you think, personally, from what we've talked about in this video, the design, the specs, the power, the engine, the, the powertrain, all of that, do, and this interior that is pretty much 95% of the interior shared with the uh, Grecale, for example, do you think that this is a, uh, $200,000 car. I, I think you have to drive it before, you know, you do your final judgments. Oh man, this goes. And it sounds so good as well. Imagine, just imagine if we had the V8 still in this car. But that's not what we have. We have the Natuno V6, which f so far feels completely okay to me. So let's just slow it down. There's nobody behind us soon to be nobody in front of us and what we're gonna do now is just do a quick launch here so first gear and manual and let's go turbos building up and there they pop in oh man yeah it, it is a quick gt i don't know if it's you know if it feels like a gt uh, because i have it in the sportiest setting the ride is still very comfortable i would probably always 
drive this in in sport mode with the sport uh, with the suspension setting sport as well maybe not what if i'm going on a long road trip on the highways for hours and hours and i'll probably put it into comfort but it feels it feels like an exotic this thing it drives like an exotic and it also i would say sounds like an exotic as well I think they did something, sprinkle some magic on that Netuno V6 because it feels like a V8. It's it's weird how how much it, it it sounds like a V8 and it almost feels like it's pulling similar to what you would think a V8 would pull. So uh, we're coming into a tunnel here, and there is nobody behind us again. Empty streets, and let's see what this sounds like in this tunnel. Okay, I, I don't think we need the V8 anymore. Turning radius is absolutely Titanic-like. I just noticed that. It is, a, as I said, a rather big two-door uh, coupe, this thing, in the wheelbase. Man, it sounds fantastic. The brakes are great, too. So... You know, if if you're paying two hundred thousand dollars for this, coming from a design standpoint, it, it it might be worth it because I can't think of any other car that has these classic Italian exotic looks to them today. As I said, Ferrari these days feels like they're moving away a little bit from that uh, traditional almost like 60s design of exotic cars. Well, well, this one, a brand new Maserati, Gran Turismo, I can't, w I, I, I have no idea if this is this quick and feels this pretty raw in sport mode in the Modena trim. I have no idea what the Trofeo is all about. I'm enjoying this drive a lot <laughs> because I think not just am I enjoying it, this is definitely one of these cars that when I'm cruising around in this, I'm doing my environment, all the people around me, everyone that passes me in their car, I'm doing them a favor because I'm giving them a chance to watch this beauty sculpture on wheels just roll by them. They get to see this in motion. So, final verdict from me here. You have, if you ever get a chance to drive this, Go and do that, and then I think the pricing will make a little bit more sense since the interior, as we talked about, is shared with a lot of other Maserati, even Stellantis products, with this uh, infotainment screen right here. So if you get a chance to drive one, go and do that. For me personally, what I would pay a, pay a premium for is this gorgeous timeless design that, as I said before, is going to be just as good looking uh, today like it will be a hundred years from now. Big thanks to Maserati of Denver here in, obviously in Colorado for providing this gorgeous, stunning Gran Turismo for me to review for you guys today. If you're interested in this one, or if you're interested in a exotic here in Colorado, go and check out Mike Ward's entire inventory linked down in the description. They have a fantastic selection of very cool cars right now. And last but not least, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.